Hello and welcome and I hope you've spotted that tutorial number 10 and my apologies, abundant apologies to all those who pointed it out to me. Um, you will see that this is tutorial number 10 part 3a. Um, I had originally done tutorial number 10 parts 1, 2, 3 and 4 and it was pointed out to me that uh, part 3 to part 4 was missing several steps. Um, so tutorial 10 is all about Docker, using Docker to migrate applications. We've written a very simple application in Node and we're going to move that to software. So Node on Docker, on CentOS, in a VBox on my Mac and we're going to move that um, dock to uh, software. And what happened was between videos 3 and 4, parts 3 and 4, there was a big gap where these steps um, if I can flick down to them, creating the Docker file, building our own Docker image, running our own custom Docker image on our virtual box, and then testing the application, and then moving that, those four steps were missing. So my apologies, uh, I'm trying to rectify that now by uh, two months later, actually recreating the video that should have been there, uh, should have been part four, but is now going to be part three A to allow you to understand the gap between step six and steps 11. So that's what this video is about. Um, so let's dive in. Let's create our Docker file and build our Docker image. Picking up where we left off, um, we have a node application uh, called index.js. It's in here, um, in here. We know that this runs, we've tested it, it, it outputs that, uh, hey there, software is line, so that's all fine. Now we need to take that application and install it within a Docker image. So first off, you need Docker running. I've installed Docker on this uh, CentOS machine, CentOS virtual machine running in VBox. So we know it's there, we can have a look at the images. Uh, and we've got some Ubuntu, um, um, Trusty there, and 14.04. We've got some CentOS as well, and that's fine. Um, so what we want to do now is, how do I get my node application docked, basically, into a Docker image? So to do that, the first thing you need to do is vi a Docker file. And in the Docker file, we are going to list out the commands you need to run, or Docker needs to run, to install all of the relevant packages that are associated with our application, have them all in place within the Docker image, so that it can then self-contain the whole thing. So, how do we do that? Well, first we want to, whoops, if I actually go into insert mode, which I am now, we want to tell it from. Well, we're going from CentOS, CentOS, six then we want to say that we're going to run a command in this centos 6 machine and what are we going to run well we need to have the package called node but in order to have node as you saw when we installed node on centos we've got to have the epl epel extended libraries so we need to go and get those from uh, the repository which is if I remember rightly, download dot uh, Fedora project dot org. Uh, we are on, so it's going to be public. I am thinking ahead here. We're on version six and we're in x86 64 because we're on the 64 bit one. And then I want the EPLs release, um, I believe. This may fail, but I believe it's those. It's 6 8. Right, that's good. So we're going to get the EPELs. Then we need to run. Well, what command would you run from the command line? You do a yum install of npm, as we did earlier. But you can't just do that. We're going to give it a minus yes, because this is actually running within. Um, the installation to put it in a Docker image, so we'll give it a minus Y. Then we want to copy over our files. So we have our files in the directory we're actually in right now, and we're going to move those into slash source in the Docker image. 
Then we're going to run um, a CD to slash source. Again, thinking as if you were in the Docker image. And then we're going to do that npm install just as we did on our local machine. And then, of course, we need to tell it what port our application, we need to expose that port from the Docker image. So we say expose 8080. And then finally, we're going to actually run the command to kick off our application. So it's a node application, and we're going to run it from slash src slash index.js. Okay, and that's it. So what we're going to do now is the Docker command to create an image is going to read this Docker file, it's going to create the CentOS 6 image, and then it's going to put on top the package that we need, yum install npm, copy over our source files, um, expose a port, and run the command when, it, <coughs> when it's called to actually fire off our index.js application. So how do we get this actual application onto, um, you know, how do we get Docker to actually build this? Well, we just want to do Docker build, and then we're going to tell it, what, what are we going to call it? Well, we're going to call it, um, let's call it EJK, and, um, oh, what the hell, we'll call it Sassify 4, yeah? So we'll call it Sassify 4, and where is it going to run from, or where is the Docker file? It's in this directory, so a dot. So, fingers crossed that we've got the uh, Docker file correct, and this will now create our Docker image. Whoops. Ha. Ah. Okay. Namespace. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Let's put it in root. Yep. Yeah. And off it goes. I have spelt, as you can see there, E-P-E-L, not E-P-L-E. -E. <laughs> I was looking at that thinking, what on earth has gone wrong with that command? There we go. Let's build it again. There we go. So let's let that run, and that will create our, you can see it here, it's running these commands step by step, step one, and so on. And then it's going to build our actual Docker image. Excellent. So it's successfully built. Now when we go Docker images, root satisfy 4, there it is, 559, perfect. So that's great. We now have an image. Um, we now need to uh, have a look at, is that running? I can't remember whether it starts it. It hasn't actually started up our image, um, so we now need to actually run our Docker image. But we need to be mindful that we have to port map. So we have to say what port I'm going to call on to the Docker application. So for that, we want to do a Docker, and we want to run our actual Docker image. Uh, we want to port map from you know what whatever we want uh, 23555 let's do that um to 88 because 8080 was what we exposed within the application and minus d uh we're going to say root and sassify 4 that's what we called it root sassify 4 so let's see what happens that's now running that's an application that's up we can see it running in here. So when we curl, just to make a HTTP call on um, localhost, and what port are we going to? Well, we're going to go to the port we told it to run it on, 23555. There it is. Hey there, softwares. So there you go. That is how to package up your Docker image um, into, sorry, your node application into Docker running on CentOS in VBox on my Mac. Um, now that we've got that, 
All we need to do is the final step is to save this actual image, which is, if we have a look at Docker, Docker save, save an image to a tar file. So we're going to Docker save, and then we're going to move, you know, SCP this image, which is where we'll pick up on tutorial four. Um, so my apologies once again, this is, you know, shoehorned in after the fact. I missed these out in the earlier uh, uh, video sequence. Um, apologies to everyone that's watched uh, tutorial 10 and wondered what on earth went on between the end of 3 and the start of 4 for uh, tutorial 10. This now fills that gap, so this you know helps you understand how to build your Docker image to then send over the software. So let me pause it there and then we'll just quickly back up this machine, uh, this Docker image, and then SCP it over. So just to finish off, um, we have our Docker images. We now want to save this. So, as I said, whoops, if I get into the actual thing, we want to Docker save. Um, well, let's have a look. Docker and save. I'm going to save it as a tar font. So, Docker save, and it'll tell you the options. So, we want to do a Docker save. Um, we want to output it to. Uh, let's just call it, whoops, sassify4.tar and we want to take the root, whoops, sassify4. And that's it. That's going to save a Docker file for us. Let me just start PowerPoint again and do a double check that we actually did what we said we were going to do if PowerPoint ever starts up. Eventually, there it is. The machine is busy. It's doing lots of stuff. <laughs> there we go. Kill that file. And let's try and put this back into. Uh, let me slim down my window size. Let's bring PowerPoint in here so you can see what I'm looking at. We said that we would do the extra steps in the intro. So we've created a Docker file. Tick, we've done that. We've built our own custom Docker image. Tick, we've done that. We've run our custom, uh, our custom Docker image in our VirtualBox VM. Tick, we've done that. And test our simple Node.js application where we've just done that. Um, there was a final step, I guess, before the move our custom Docker image to the bare metal server, which was to save it as a tar file, and we've just done that. We do an ls in here. There it is. So now you can pick up with tutorial 10, part 4, uh, in the middle of the SCP of Sassify 4 over to the bare metal machine. Thanks very much. My name is Eamon Killian. I hope these videos are useful, and thanks so much to those who pointed out to me that I was missing the elements between 3 and 4. So here is 3A. Thank you.